Now joining us now with analysis is political science professor Jack Pitney from Claremont McKenna College. Uh, the Trump lawyers pushing back against special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia, Russia investigation and the possibility of the president testifying against himself. Now, who is winning this strategic fight? Does it, is, does it matter which side of the aisle you're on? Uh, the lawyers aren't making a very effective legal argument. They had a 20-page document they sent to Mueller that had a fundamental mistake in the law. They uh, referenced the wrong obstruction of justice statute. So this isn't so much about uh, what the courts might rule. It's all about public opinion. Mm -hmm. They're assuming it may eventually become a matter of impeachment, which is a political act rather than a judicial one. And they are solidifying support among Republicans and Trump supporters. And a lot of talk about pardons. Could the president really pardon himself should an indictment come down? The Constitution is silent on that. The uh, Constitution gives the president broad power to issue pardons, but it doesn't say anything about pardoning himself or herself. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of legal scholars think that's not possible, but it has never been litigated, and we don't know until it happens. Okay. And we're just days away from Tuesday's California primary and the bitter race for California governor with Gavin Newsom and Antonio Villaraigosa, who we just saw in the piece uh, by Dave Bryan, running one and two in the polls in the battle seems to be for second place. Your thoughts on the race. Does a Republican stand a chance? We were just talking and you seem to think John Cox is, is number two right it's now. It's a possibility and that's what Gavin Newsom wants. Yeah. Gavin Newsom has been talking up John Cox at every opportunity. That's the opponent he wants because if John Cox is his opponent in November, he can drink mint juleps between mm -hmm. now and election day and he'll win a big victory. Viragosa he'd have a race on his hands. Yeah, I, I heard something about Newsom saying that at one of the, um, at uh, one of his speeches, whatnot, that he was maybe hoping for John Cox because it could be maybe easier for and him. And in his advertising, he's attacking John Cox as conservative with the real hope that Republicans will see that and say, oh, John Cox is a conservative. I'm going to vote for him. Mm -hmm. That's the opponent Gavin Newsom really wants. Exciting stuff. And topic uh, number three, the Puerto Rico hurricane death toll for months. Uh, it stood at just 64 people, and now it's over 4,600 and rising. So how did the government and the island um, island politicians over there fail to recognize the crisis after the storm? Well, one, uh, a lot of the excess deaths occurred not as a result of direct injuries, but because of things such as medical care, interruption in dialysis or respirators, things like that over time led to 4,645 deaths. Uh, this is, a, a, this is a, a reflection of Puerto Rico's unique status as a commonwealth. If it were a state, if it had representatives in Congress and the U.S. Senate, be very different. Just picture something like this happening in California. Uh, immediately after a disaster, as we've seen, our elected representatives would go into overdrive. And of course, California has both the uh, majority leader, Kevin McCarthy, and the minority leader, Nancy Pelosi. Puerto Rico does not have a vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Thanks for coming today. Thank you.